But I'm do right you here. know where the first, where it first came about that the carbon dioxide was bad for the atmosphere of Earth? Yeah, we bring it up. The uh, Nuclear Power Commission back in the 60s, because they wanted everything to be nuclear. One of the things I really love about being out there in the streets is from time to time, just from happenstance, you're going to run across somebody that's the real deal. And uh, this guy's the real deal. Professor David Dilley, a climatologist, uh, just a lot of gists. Guy's got, he worked for the National Weather Association and He's just steeped into it. He's been at it a long time, and he's a, a, a true scientist on the uh, climate, weather, and just about anything else related to it. And uh, he uh, has some videos out that I highly recommend. I've already learned a couple of things from him that I can use out there when I'm arguing with these idiots. So I uh, yeah, will put his uh, website in the uh, description. And, uh, uh, you know, go check this guy out. And uh, I was just fortunate enough again to have him stop by and, you know, and have this little chat. And um, that's why you like coming along, too, because you never know what's going to happen out here in the streets. And it's the front lines and... Uh, I'm out there on them. And of course, you know the routine. If you like it, you like it. If you care, you share. And if you can, you can contribute. Uh, and uh, let's get into this, and I'll see you on the flip side. Uh, I have about six videos online on climate change. Do you? And uh, I do talks also on it. What is your name? I'll give you my kind. Please. And, uh, but we summer in Maine. There you go. And they don't want me to speak up there because they say, well, one of our like people say they're, they're going to feel uncomfortable hearing no, about natural cycles. Out. Thank you. Like they're going to feel uncomfortable. In 1971, I helped start the Institute for Environmental Alternatives with Professor Ron Cohn. Okay. So I'm out here all the time trying to lecture people on the phony global warming. Oh, it's all political. It's oh, all yeah. to get their agendas. And they're pushing it hard now because they own, they know they only have a year or two because yeah. global cooling is coming in big time now. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have the big push on it now. But they'll still blame but, it on climate change. They'll still blame that on climate change. I mean, but, well, they blame everything yeah. on it. Uh, you have a flood or a tornado. It's like it's never happened before. Yeah, well, it happened 50 years ago. It's a cycle. I mean, come on. Now, I have to ask you about this. Yeah. Because I've done some studying in, uh, on this, and I've had some uh, some other people that are involved with this. Uh, weather manipulation programs that go on, geoengineering. There's... They've always been working on yes. that. How much? Well, some. You see, I've, I've seen some papers out there where some of these countries would really want to do it big yeah, time. Yeah, Put stuff in the atmosphere. Well, China's and, even bragged about making it snow and rain. And, well, you could do that in, in a local area, but if they try to do it for the world, the problem is if we're going into our natural climate cycle for global cooling. Are you going to send us much deeper into it? Thank you. And then yeah. we're going to have a food shortage. Right. Well, and, that's, yeah. And they don't understand that because people pulling the strings, they actually know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They know we, we're going into it. That's why they're pulling the strings fast now. Thank you. And, but the people down below that are on the string, they don't know. Right. Because they watch NBC, CBS, CNN. Right. They, they don't have a clue. So they think it's all real. We did it. Uh, it's just no clue. Right. And but and they don't want to learn about it. That's the problem. I know. 
Uh, they bought you're into it. Offend me if you talk about that. Well, it's yeah. the old adage, you know. Uh, it's easier to fool some people than convince them that they've been fooled. Yeah. And the people that are bought into the whole, you know, hoax, yeah. don't want to be, you know, admit that they've been fooled. Yeah. So you know, the old guy or you know, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, the, the, you know, the oil people bought you off is what they. You know. Well, that's what they try to say, and yeah. they, I don't want to blogs anymore because they just attack you personally and and although I have no money from oil companies or anything they, of course. that's their first thing yeah well yeah, you're, you're being paid by me yeah no I'm not I, I, have yeah. no, I absolutely have no contact with them right. um, but this is what they do they just put out their lie and uh, try to smash you and that's their only defense that's and yeah. um, well when I'm up in Maine during the summer I'm often on uh, uh, the radio station up there, but it's the Fox Radio Network from Maine, and they tried to, they called around the country trying to get someone to come on and debate me. Right. No one would. That's that's what I was just going to bring yeah. up. Because they I, won't debate. I don't think they will not debate. I try to get them in debates out here. They won't do it. And they won't do it. They can't do it. They can't defend it. Yeah. Because they don't want to go prior to 1850 or 1930. They don't want to see anything prior to that because, oh, their cycles. I don't want anyone to know about that. <laughs> I had a uh, guy last week, total leftist, and I, I, he's, you know, he, you guys don't believe in global warming. Says, no, I, I believe in global warming and cooling, but it's not man-made global warming and cooling. Comes the cycles. He you know, says, you know, and I brought up the fact that I helped start the institute. And he goes, well, you don't know who you're talking to. And he says, I'm a cli- I got a Ph.D. in climate psychology uh, or climate uh, uh, science. So I says, well, great. Let's have a debate. Wouldn't do it. No. No, they won't do it. They won't do Wouldn't it. do it. And that's what I bring up when they argue with me. I says, see if you can find a debate anywhere on, on TV, on the Internet, on colleges, anywhere where a climate uh, global warming believer mm-hmm. is, will debate with a skeptic. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, you can't find it. No, they won't do it. And, uh, yeah, one guy, the uh, Kiwanis Club, yeah. They, he, you know, I spoke there a couple years back, and he was uh, tearing into me this past week, saying, uh, and we didn't speak up, we, uh, a couple of us in the audience, because uh, you were speaking to the uh, choir in there, because most of them were, were uh, conservative, right. and we didn't speak up, so he was tearing into me, saying, next time you speak here, and we'd like to have you, they're going to tear into me. So he started talking about stuff, and I told him, well, yeah, but why... Was it so warm in, ni- in the 1930s, as warm as today? And especially when you go on the 220-year cycles, it was uh, we had a warm cycle 220 years ago. Then you keep going back with the 1,200-year cycle. 1,200 years ago was much warmer than today. You go back beyond that 3,000 years ago, much warmer than even 1,200 years ago. 5,000 years ago, much, much warmer and 50% less ice in the Arctic. Right. So, so, okay, if natural cycles aren't here, how did this happen? Right. <laughs> I mean, they were growing grapes in the and, 15th century in Northern Ireland. And he you know. didn't email back. Yeah, right. That shut him down. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, he, he didn't have an answer. That's it. It's so easy when you bring up the facts like this. It's so easy to bring up, you know, just blow their whole argument apart. That's right. It's so easy to do it. And I just, it blows my mind how many, well, it shows you the power of propaganda. I mean, it's, it gets repeated often enough, people just buy into it. It's a shame. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the Green New Deal is just, I mean, it's comical. It's Well, it, they've admitted that it's, that they couldn't do a lot of what they're doing. It's just, uh, they just want to do some things. And, uh, well, yeah, we have to be good to the planet. Well, of course, being good and, stewards, yeah, yes. Switching over to electric a lot of things or what have you. If it's feasible, if it's cost effective, yeah. Uh, some of it isn't right now. We're not there yet. Have you ever... Uh 
watched or heard of a documentary called Thrive? I don't think so. I highly recommend it. Uh, Procter & Gamble, of course, of which you're familiar with. Foster Gamble, heir to that vast fortune, mm -hmm. groomed to be a top 0.00001%, mm -hmm. has an epiphany as a young man. Yeah. And he goes, the people I'm surrounded with, the elites that surround me, are insane. So he breaks from their agenda and he makes this document and we call Thrive. Mm -hmm. Now, in it, the first thing he exposes is government cover-ups for over 100 years. And the very first thing he exposes is offshoots of Tesla technology, free energy, and how they're suppressing that. Uh, you know, clean, abundant, non-polluting energy that we can get out of the mm -hmm. atmosphere from the magnetic mm -hmm. fields and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend watching this documentary. He mm -hmm. explains it very well, well. Some of it's been suppressed, like you yes. said, uh, back in the 60s, I think it was. There was a new energy that uh, they were perfecting. Where it, uh, it's not really nuclear something else where you can have it a little box that big put in your backyard power your whole house right. a box that big would do a whole right. city and uh, you could break it open and you're not going to be radioactive right. yeah and but the uh, nuclear energy commission what have you suppressed it mm -hmm. and somehow they kept it quiet they wouldn't let it be perfected yeah. and that's part of it there's some stuff out there that they don't want it because they want to do other things uh, that's part. But do you know where the first, where it first came about that carbon dioxide was bad for the atmosphere of Earth? Okay, yeah, we bring it up. The uh, Nuclear Power Commission back in the 60s, because they wanted everything to be nuclear. So they wrote the first paper on carbon dioxide is bad. That's where it came from. They were pushing their agenda, and that's the same thing's happening God, now. they just lie to us on so many levels. Well, they should make it illegal to lie on the Senate floor. Shifty shift. That should be illegal. I'm going to look forward to listening to some of your... Uh... Yeah, there's, there's some six videos on there. They've done the uh, interviews, and uh, uh, they took some of my stuff. They put some of their graphics on it. And um, plus, I'm on my website. I have a uh, climate section. I do hurricane forecasting, all on natural cycles. I track natural cycles for hurricane landfalls. It's all nat natural cycles. It's all about cycles. Everything. Yeah. Indeed. Are you familiar with uh, Lieutenant Ben Livingston or Ben Livingston? Have you heard, heard of him? He's known as the father of weather weapons. No, no. Yeah, he, uh, when Eisenhower started the Department of Weather and Climate Modification in yeah. 54, he took that and became known as the father of weather weapons, and he perfected the use of them. And we used them in Vietnam from 68 yeah. to 72. Yeah. And when that was leaked out, the UN passed the UN Weather Weapons Treaty Ban, banning the use of weather weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, when Katrina happened, he he was on uh, Alex Jones' show, InfoWars, and he said, if you would give me four planes, I could have knocked that hurricane out. But since then, they've decided not to do that, because uh, they don't know. They say, we could make the hurricane worse. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, that's what no. I'm saying. I, you know, when we go around schooling with Mother Nature, yeah, yeah. I don't think we you, have... You no, no, you know, no. It's, uh, we, we don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for your testimony. And I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel, and uh, it's all real. Oh yeah. It's, uh, I know over in Florida, I'm speaking to a lot of the Republican groups, and uh, I had over a hundred in my last one. And I'm going to be speaking at the retired military uh, group over there too. And, uh, but it's yeah. What? It's a fight, isn't it? Well, it's a fight because I, I could be talking all the time at uh, at places, but they won't let me speak. Yeah. Indeed. They don't want to, someone in the audience is going to feel uncomfortable. And it only takes one person to shut you down. That's yeah. the problem on today's society. One person. Yeah. Well, the other 40 want to hear you. Right. But one person says no, so it's, I know. you can't do it. I know. But the, I, I still have a lot of faith. The truth always prevails. 
will eventually. Well, evolve. eventually they're going to be proven wrong, right? Oh, wait until this. I mean, the, oh, yeah. I mean, the weather acre. It, 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 the cold air is really banking up. This is it's, we we got some nasty winters coming. Yeah. Nasty winters. This one, you think this one will be bad? It'll yeah. be nasty. Okay. Three bucks. Thank sure. You. Okay. Nice talking. Thank to you. you, Professor. It's a pleasure. Well, there you go. Is uh, Professor David Dilly. Um, again, go check him out, please. If you want to gain any knowledge on uh, how to combat the believers out there in this hoax, uh, the man has, you know, he has the creds. He has the creds. So again, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Share this video. Uh, and uh, if you like it, you like it. And if you can contribute, uh, please pray for me out there. Things are uh, getting stranger and stranger the closer we get to this election. Now that the uh, the Bill Barr has come down and started making this a criminal investigation on the deep state, uh, I can imagine that there are things are going to heat up quite a bit. And uh, I'm trying to prepare myself for that. But what's going to help me out more than anything are your prayers. So uh, please, please, you know, put me in there. Thank you very much for stopping by and uh, God bless you. I'll see you on the streets.